Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk and today I want to show you how easy it is when working with the Umbraco Cloud project to be able to work with it locally. It was one thing that was bothering me, I didn't know how to do it. I looked at the documentation on Umbraco.com, um, our Umbraco.com and I found out how to do it. So there's instructions on there, but what this video is doing is it's just giving you a shortcut to how you can quickly get it working on yours. So let me show you. So if you go into ourumbraco.com and go to documentation, then you go to working with Visual Studio. So this is specific to working with Visual Studio, this tutorial. So it's in Umbraco Cloud, setup, working with Visual Studio. What you want to do is download this file here, umbraco.co UASS. And basically this is a nice little tool which will set up an, a, a solution for you in Visual Studio so that you can work with your Braco Cloud project locally. Uh, it's a nice bit of magic and it will get that all set up for you. Just wait for it to download. So I've pasted that into there and then all I want to do is just run this. So I'll double click on it to run it and it will ask me now for the clone URL. So when it says the clone URL that is for the development environment of your project or if you've only got one environment which is live it just needs to have where your project is in the git repo that they give you when you create your cloud account so to get that what you do is you go into your cloud account into your project and then you click on this how to connect my machine i'm not going to show you my clone url just in case you click on that button, you click on the copy um, clipboard, and then you go back to this and you just paste that in. Again, I won't show you mine just in case. Then it asks you for the namespace. So I'm gonna put in here, cause this project is for my personal website, Paul Seal. So I'm gonna put in Paul Seal as a namespace. Now it's gonna clone that for me into the folder that I chose. And as we can see, if we watch this, it'll just start pulling that down. So now what it's doing is it's downloading everything that is in that Git repo, but it's also doing a bit of magic for creating the uh, Visual Studio solution, creating the web project. It's gonna create a, a core library project as well to go with that web project. It's going to do all of that uh, just by running that command, giving it the Git clone uh, URL, which I got from copying uh, from within Umbraco Cloud and I put in the namespace of just Paul Seal. So once it's done all of that, then we'll be able to open this solution and work with it in Visual Studio, and I'll show you that next. Maybe I could tell you a joke. So uh, I went to the cash point the other day, I accidentally used my donor card, that cost me an arm and a leg. Um, I went into KFC the other day, I asked for a leg and a wing, so they threw me out. Hey. So hopefully that filled the time because this is going really slow. One thing that might help is if I plug in a power source. Right, this is failing, so don't panic too much, but basically it's built into that wasp thing. This is what I understand. Either built into the wasp thing uh, exe that it downloaded here, or in the UASS command. I doubt it's in that, but I think it's in the wasp thing. In that wasp thing, anyway. Um, I think it uses an older version of NuGet, and it's not as simple as just upgrading NuGet on your machine. It's got something built into it. This is from looking at the blog posts about it on the forum. Sorry, not. This is from looking at the forum posts, and what I'm trying to say to you is, don't worry about that, It you can still run it locally, it's not an issue. Right, now what I'm going to do is open this in Visual Studio. So I've navigated to the folder where this solution is. The reason I'm doing it this way and not just double clicking it, is because I have a problem with um, with my recording equipment. It's really annoying me, and it'll probably black screen if I do it that way. So I'm going to try this and hope it doesn't black screen on us. 
Whilst we wait for it to open, let's just see. We've got a pullseal.core, and that is the class library that accompanies pullseal.web. And we have pullseal.solution, and then we've got the new get packages. That's what it's done for, is it's put all of that in there. And we just wait for Visual Studio. I've got ReSharper installed, so that takes forever nowadays. Um, come on. Right, this is it. So now, because of what I did, it was really easy. Um, it's built all of this for us. So in theory, we should just be able to do a build solution. And then when we've built the solution, we should just be able to run. So fingers crossed, this builds and it runs. Then what I'll do is I'll, um, when we have got it built and running, I will edit the template just so you can see a change on there. And I'll push it up to the uh, development environment within Ubraco Cloud. And we'll look at that site and see that that change got pushed up. So let's click on this. Run it locally. And see what happens. Hopefully I'm still recording. Yep, not got the black screen of death yet. That's what I've been experiencing. I've been really doing my head in. Here we go. So when it loads up, it, it wants to restore from Umbraco Cloud. So what I do is I click on restore. And that, I think, brings down the data or media or all the magical stuff. So it brings it down to my dev version. So that's the other part of it. Then I can open Umbraco. And then, now I should be able to log in using my Umbraco Cloud details, that login is. Don't show the tour. So this project, all I have at the moment is just a home page. And that home page is just from a template. I've got my name is Bob Carroll G's. It's not. Um, so that's it. So I'm just running one temp a single template for this home page. I don't have any properties on this yet, but what I'm going to do for this demo here for this video is I'm just going to change it in the solution. I'm going to the views. I'm going to home and I'm just going to edit the template from within Visual Studio. I know I can do it in the browser, but I wanted to show you that I'm doing it locally so i'll just change my name to paul seal save that file reload the page on here there we go that's updated so just to show you something if i go to content and then i click on development i can view website so i can see what this website looks like on the development site So that's what it currently looks like, and it's got Bob Carroll G's. So what I'm saying is I'm going to push this change to the development environment. So I've got local, which is my Visual Studio local machine, development, and then I do have staging and live, but I'm going to push this up to development now. So what I do is I stop it debugging. I click on save all and then I go into the folder and what I need to do is go into paulseal.web and this has its own git repository which is what it uses what Umbraco Cloud uses so any changes that I make will get pushed up through this git, git repository so I'm going to do git commit master I'm using uh, tortoise git but you can use whatever you want to use and I'm just going to push that up with it so if we compare the changes, we can see that I just changed Bob Carroll G's to Paul Seal. So I'll do um, updated name in template. Obviously it defeats the object of Umbraco because it's content management, but it's just to show you that this is a, a change to the files 
and then I want to commit that and then push. Click on OK. So you can do this with a command line, you can do this with Git Kraken, um, you can do it through Visual Studio probably. The reason I didn't do it through Visual Studio is because Visual Studio is looking at the Git repository that was on the outer, outside this folder. So oh, just while it's doing that, look, it's doing all these sorts of things here. So not only was it sending those two files that have changed, but it's also doing some other magic um, to do with Umbraco Cloud. So that's done, that was successful. So now I should be able to uh, load this project again. Three changes ready for deployment. So it has picked up the changes. And one of those changes will be um, modified by Paul Seal, modified a minute ago. So it's picked up that I've changed it. So I want to view the page. So hopefully now in the development environment, we can see that the template has changed. So that is proof of concept. I've downloaded it to my local machine. I've edited something. I've pushed it back up. So this should now be working in Umbraco Cloud, following on from the change that I made locally. So that's what I wanted to achieve in this video. Um, so fingers crossed that will have worked. Yes, it has. Right, hello, I am Paul Seal. So let's say that I made some changes in Umbraco Cloud that I want to bring back down into my local. So I'm going to make a change in Umbraco Cloud now. I'm going to go into templates. I'm going to open out that. I am an Umbraco developer and also an MVP. Umbraco MVP. Save that. So now I'm changing the template again. And what I want to do is I want to update my local version. So you don't want to have to run that Umbraco as a service command every time. So now that I have this project in here, I can just uh, right click and do, well, I can just basically do a git pull. So there's various ways to do it, but I could use this tool, let's be consistent. So tortoise git, and then I'll just do a pull. And that should pick up a change Yep, yeah. view home, one file change. So now locally, if I view my site, um, I need to run it again. Yes to all, and then run it again with IIS Express. And it's died. Oh no, it hasn't died. It's just saying that I can't run it from there. So if you ever get that error, all you have to do is just click on the web project and then click on IIS Express again. And that will load it from the root of the site. And it so now locally I'm running it and I've got hello I'm Paul Seal and I'm an Umbraco developer and also an Umbraco MVP working for Moriyama. So that's worked. So I've shown you how to do changes locally and on um, the Umbraco cloud environment. So I think that's proven it for you, and hopefully it recorded the whole thing. If it didn't, I'm going to give up. Yeah, so the next video, I think I might start. I, might, I think what I'm going to do on the next video is show you how to set up a um, models builder with the API so that it can have all my models in the um, uh, paulseal.core library. So I hope you uh, enjoyed watching the video. Um, if you did, please click on like, uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, share it with people, tweet it, and feel free to tweet me. I'm at Codeshare Paul. Um, yeah, I'm quite active on Twitter. Do enjoy interacting with people. So, yeah, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you again on the next video. Thank you. Bye.